my Sheila, my little hero. Really my hero. I, I said, babe, we deal with life, death, we deal with real issues. I said, but this issue is your mama. I know how I dealt with mine. Babe, please tell me your key so I could help others. How, how are you healing this the way you are? It's pitiful to her, her mother's facing right now, her health. Just, just at a real crisis right now. And I said, how are you handling this? She said, it's a sermon you preached. I said, would you tell me what sermon? She said, that and about Jericho. She said, for a while I kept this on my mind 24 hours a day. She said, I, I started getting sick. When, when I married Sheila, her stomach was so full of ulcers, one huge sore and the other. Three of her specialists told her, said, Miss Wynn, this will never turn around. For the rest of your life, every time you eat, you're going to be sick. Every time you eat, it's going to run through you. It said you will never, it will never quit hurting. It will never stop. We did not get a miracle. But I prayed and I prayed, and about six months later, we realized she don't have those ulcers no more. We got a healing, and I feel I feel that healing anointed. I don't think this is just another service. I think, hallelujah, I don't think this is just another meeting. I wish you'd write down some things. I wish you'd just make you a list today. Hallelujah. People's got their bucket list. For, before I leave, you know, I want to see the, the trees of California. I want to see the, the, the lighthouses in Maine, or I want to see the rivers in Alaska or Earth Canada. I, somebody ought to get a bucket list before I leave. The doctors told me I'll never be off of this medication. I'm not just going to quit before I leave this world. I want him to tell me, you don't need it no more. That's not in your body no more. You, you, you ought to make up your mind. I'm going to have me a bucket list. They said that will never get saved, but they will get saved. They said that will never change. That's my heart's desire. I want to see this family. I want to see this. In, uh, hallelujah. So Sheila said, when I kept it on my mind all the time, she said, my life was just, I had no peace. I had no joy. I, I had no victory. I didn't care about tomorrow getting up. She said, but I I love my mom more than I ever have, but I realize I am her daughter and not her God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm not being hard. I'm preaching my heart out right now. She realized, she said, I realized, hallelujah, I am her child. I'm one of my mama's best friends, but I didn't go to Calvary for her and I didn't go to the whipping post for her. And it's not my job to carry this 24 hours a day and let it break me so I can't help nobody else. It's my job to go before the presence of a great big God. Hallelujah. I feel an anointing in here. I wish somebody would make up their mind. This Jericho walls will not break me because I have a God who's bigger and I have a God who's greater. Hallelujah. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna. So the people shouted when the priest blew with the trumpets and he came to pass. When the people heard the sound of the trumpet and the people shouted with a great shout that the walls fell down flat so that the people went up into the city and every man straight before him and they took the city. I've, I've heard a hundred ideals on this. This is my thought. They fell down flat. God said, if I let them fall to the left, they'll think they'll give you credit for pushing it over. If I let them fall to the right, they'll give you credit for pushing it over. God said, I'm just going to come straight down from heaven and I'm just going to mash it down flat. And ain't nobody going to get the credit but me. Hallelujah. I believe God wants to fight some of your battles in such a way that you don't have no hesitation. No, God turned this thing around. It was God that turned this thing around. And I believe that was one of heaven's greatest moments. The old prophet had prophesied, said there'll be famine in the land. Three and a half years. They didn't, it wasn't like, wasn't like Egypt didn't give them seven years to prepare and seven years of famine. It just started. So there was no preparation. So it went from this year's crop who we got for next year. And it's going to run out and we're going to have two and a half years with no excess, no extra. During this time, this little widow had a little boy. Somewhere in the middle of this famine, her food had run out and she had enough oil and bread for one little cake. Enough for her and the boy to eat it and die. And I believe her little brokenness had got the angel's attention. The devil's attention. The angels are standing back heavy hearted demons are laughing and mocking will destroy another then God called a man of God into the scene he gave her a little old word 
For thus saith the Lord God of Israel, the, bar the barrel of meal shall not waste, neither shall the cruise of oil fail until the day that the Lord sent the rain upon the earth. She went and did according to the saying of the Elijah and said, and she and her house did eat many days, and the barrel of meal wasted not. Neither did the cruise of oil fail according to the word of the Lord, which he spake by Elijah. And that was, believe, that was one of heaven's greatest moments. Hallelujah. Little old preacher said, I won't preach. I, ain't, I will not preach. I will not go to Nineveh and preach. I will not fulfill my call in my ministry. I got enough money to buy my own ticket. I'll get so far I can't hear the voice of God. And he began to run. But you can't outrun God. You may outrun the county sheriff, but you can't outrun God. You may outrun the TBI, and the FBI, the KGB, the CIA. You may, you may change, but you can't outrun God. David say, though I take the wings of a morning and fly, he's already there. Though, though I make my bed in hell, he's already, wherever I go, I can't flee. I can't get away from God. He'll chase me. He knows my thoughts are far off. Hallelujah. Somewhere running from God, he got in a storm. I, I want to preach gentle. This is not my sermon. Hallelujah. Life just gives some storms, but there's a storm simply that can be stopped if you'll just quit running from God. I don't care how much you live for God, how close you get to God, there will be some storms and battles. But there's other storms that'll stop immediately if you'll just quit running from God. Hallelujah. If you'll just make up your mind, I'm going to fulfill what God's called me to do. There's some storms that will just stop immediately. And I, Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Jonah kept running. He kept running and running from God. You, you need to understand when you run from God, you're not only affecting yourself, you're affecting everybody around you. you, you got to understand when you run from God you pull back the blessings of God and when it pulls back from you it pulls back from everybody around you hallelujah hallelujah don't know how to preach this but every once in a while you got to make up your mind if you don't want to be right with God I don't want to be too close to you because if you're not right with God there's not going to be a blessing on your life and I need the blessing of God and I need the protection of God and I need the mercy of God I'm not talking about mean to, I'm not talking about being mean to them or cutting them off I'm telling you I I just don't want to get too close to somebody that don't love God. I don't want to get too close to somebody that's under the wrath of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'll pray for them. I'll love them. Hallelujah. But I'm trying to find somebody that wants to love the Lord their God with all their heart and all their soul and all their mind. Yes, we'll love the lost. Yes, we'll be a friend to sinners. Yes, we'll reach for the bruised and the broken. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But if you want to die lost, you're not taking me down with you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If you want to die in the mess, hallelujah. Come a time, come a time. I got this, hallelujah. But I'll sacrifice unto thee with the voice of thanksgiving. I'll pay that that I've vowed. Salvation is the Lord. And the Lord spake unto the fish and he vomited Jonah out on the dry land. I believe the angels of heaven are standing there. Heaven. They watch this fish come up and I've thought of this in my mind a hundred times. That old fish. <laughs> Still the piece of seaweed, there comes a man's head and a man's arms. Seaweed wrapped all around him. And angels. If angels ever cried, they must have cried. They said, we thought we knew the mercy of God. We thought we knew the love of God. Look how much he cared for that city. And look how much he cared for that little old preacher. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But the thing is, we all could preach our story. He's carried us out of some stuff we shouldn't have made it out of. Could anybody say amen to that? Hey, friends, this is Pastor Anthony Wynn, Oasis TV Ministry. What an honor to share this gospel that Jesus still saves, heals, and delivers. I could not carry this heavy load without you, our partners. The ministry's grown, stations have been added, and the financial load has grown. And I need you to pray about standing with me. It's six months in June. We have to repay our contract. We paid six months ahead. And what a blessing. We used to pay a week ahead, then a month ahead. This year we were able to pay six months ahead because of your giving and your kindness. So here we are at middle of the year finishing out the contracts for the rest of the year. Would you please pray? The load is just great. The burden's heavy. 
But I know you're going to help me reach this generation with this gospel. The love of God that Jesus still saves, heals, and delivers. I need to hear from you. Will you hold my hands up? I try to say a little about finances just to give these 28 minutes to preach the gospel. I do need your help. And I'm believing that you're going to fill my heart and my burden. Hold my hands up and stand with me like they helped Moses' hands up. When we get to heaven, great will be our reward of winning hearts and touching souls and changing lives. This is Brother Wynn saying thank you. Pray for us. God bless you. Hallelujah. And I believe that was one of heaven's greatest moments. I believe when three Hebrew boys stood and said, we're not going to bow. And they threw them into the fiery furnace. And the angels are standing there. And the king and all the people are watching. And demons are laughing. And said, said we, we can tell the next group, what good it do, do you to live for God? They didn't do them no good. And everything and everybody's watching. And all the wicked and the righteous are watching. And all of a sudden, the fourth man walks into the midst of the fire. Fire. Hallelujah. And when he walks into the midst of the fire, everything turns around. And surely that had to be one of heaven's greatest moments. Hallelujah. When he stepped from eternity into time and he walked through the fire with his children. Hallelujah. I just want to skip some. i got so much I want to preach. I, I, I believe this is one of heaven's greatest moments. Now the birth of Jesus Christ was on this wise. When as his mother Mary was espoused to Joseph before they came together, she was found with child of the Holy Holy Ghost. Go with me to Luke 2 and 12. And there shall be a sign unto you. You shall find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes laying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angels a multitude in heaven host praising God and said, Glory to God in the and on earth peace, good will toward men. Hallelujah. I can hear those angels crying, Glory, glory, glory. And the word was made flesh and dwelt among us. And the invisible became visible. Oh, somebody ought to give him a loud praise right now. Hallelujah. Surely, surely, this is one of this is one of heaven's greatest moments. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thirty years he grows, and on the third day there was a marriage in Canaan of Galilee and the mother of Jesus was there and Jesus said unto them fill the water pots with water and they filled them up to the brim and he said unto them draw out now and bear unto the governors of the feast and they buried and when the rulers of the feast taste the water that was made wine they knew not whence it was but the servants which knew, who drew the water knew the governors of the feast called the bridegroom Hallelujah! and surely this had to be one of heaven's greatest moments when the Lamb of God worked his first miracle hallelujah hallelujah now, now the prince of life is going to pray face the prince of death. Hallelujah. Lazarus, his friend has died. Hallelujah. And he's tired three days, but now they took him to the graveyard. Then said Jesus unto them, plainly Lazarus is dead. And when he had thus spoken, he cried with a loud voice, Lazarus, come forth. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Can I make one statement I've never preached before? This little thought's been rolling over in my spirit. Somebody told me, said, was it hard for him to get Lazarus up from the dead? I think it was harder for him not to raise every dead person in that cemetery than it was just Lazarus. I think he had to be pacific and he didn't say dead come forth. He didn't say dad, he didn't say brother come forth. He had to be pacific. Hallelujah. I think every tomb would have emptied. He has all power. He's the first and the last. He's the beginning the end. He's the lily of the valley. He's Emmanuel. Hallelujah. He's the lover of our soul. Hallelujah. Somebody ought to give him a praise out loud. I don't think it was hard for him to call Lazarus out. I think it was harder for him not to empty every tomb in that place than it was just to single out Lazarus. Then the band and the captains, the officers of the Jews took Jesus and bound him. Then Pilate therefore took and scourged him. The compassion, the angels of Sephrams, the different angel groups, compassion they've had to have the love of God and the heart of God. And how they must have been broke when they saw all the sickness and diseases. And one of them angels might have turned to another as they're looking from eternity into the earth realm, following the feet of Emmanuel. And they understood he has to die. But I wonder if they all had grasped that on the way to die. I, li I like that. I've really rolled this over. I really rolled this over. 
facing death when you know it's inedible. You know they're suffering. You don't want it to linger forever. So Jesus could have went from, he, he's, he's God, he could do anything he went, wanted to. He could, he could have mended and went straight from the trial to the cross. But he said, I love you so much. And I see the diseases and the sickness that's coming that I'm going to allow my own death, my trouble, my sorrow to prolong because I've got an appointment. I've got to stop at a whipping post. Hallelujah. 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 Surely he hath borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. Yet we did esteem him strict and smitten of God and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquity. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. And with his stripes we are healed. Hallelujah. I believe angels must have been crying holy, holy, holy. And I believe they look back to the creation of God and they look back to the creation of man. They said right to right now this has got to be heaven's greatest moments. Hallelujah. Every sickness has been conquered and canceled. And that had to be one of heaven's greatest moments. After this Jesus knowing that all things were now accomplished that the scripture might be fulfilled saith I thirst now there was sent a vessel full of vinegar and they filled a sponge with vinegar and put it upon hyssop, put it in his mouth. When Jesus our fourth had received the vinegar, he said, it is finished. And he bowed his head and gave up the ghost. That had to be one of heavens. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That had to be one of heaven's greatest moments. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Then Joseph come and he got the body of Jesus. He puts it in his own new tomb where no man had laid. And they put soldiers around it. And on that third day, the disciples, little Murray, they came to check the body of Jesus. When they go in, the napkins laying over here and the grave clothes, just like something just came out of them. And they think that the body's been stole for a moment. Quit beating yourself up when you experience fear and something overwhelms you every once in a while. These were people that literally walk with Jesus. and they're, they're just overwhelmed for moments. But Jesus will always walk up when you're being overwhelmed. Did anybody hear that? I said, Jesus, if you're real, he'll always show up when you're being overwhelmed. It, it, this, this Jesus, I, I said, he'll always show up. Sometimes you don't recognize him at first. They thought he was a gardener. But he'll always show up when life's overwhelming me. And I can say amen to that. Can anybody really say amen to that? Amen. Just because you live for God don't mean he won't. He'll always show up. He'll always show up. When he showed up and they recognized who he was, and he said, don't touch me yet. I've not ascended. In other words, I don't got time to preach all this. In other words, he said, I'm not your shepherd right now. I'm the high priest. And, and I literally have my blood. I literally have my blood. And if you touch me now, you'll tarnish, you'll tarnish my position as a high priest. If you touch me at all. Hallelujah. Four verses later, I'll let Thomas touch me. So, so I'm not the untouchable. It's just the position I'm in right now. I'm not your shepherd or your king. I'm your high priest. And I'm fixing literally to ascend. Hallelujah. I'm fixing literally to ascend into the heavens. And I'm going to literally sprinkle my blood upon the altar. The same altar you read about in Revelations where the souls of the mortars are under the altar crying, Oh Lord, how long the same altar in Isaiah 6 where I saw the Lord high and lifted up and his train filled the temple. He said, I'm going to literally sprinkle my blood. And he said, it's finished. They won't have to kill no more doves. They won't have to kill. Hey friends, this is Pastor Anthony Wynn. This is my son, Micah. We just returned from the great nation of Haiti. We were there for a week. We got to be part of moving into a new orphanage that we support. We got to preach in a local church. We got to go into the mountains and, and feed people. It was so exciting. And for, for the year we've been, but we purchased the food for the orphanage. We're going to continue to do that, but and we've also been uh, buying some food packets. And when these little babies get sick up in these little mountain villages, and they're everywhere in Haiti, when they get sick, it, without vitamins, without the right protein, their little health, they just start dying. But if you can reach them with this little packet of food, and, it, and, it, and for what, it's $25 for a, is it a six-week program? It's a six-week program, $25 for one child. That'll literally turn their life around. We, uh, so they go out, it, now what is it? They go out every day 
to every home. And a problem is there's so much hunger that they worry about people stealing the food from the babies. So they have paid people that go to the home love this. and they feed the baby. One time a day. One time a day. It, it's, it's a miracle thing that they've set up and they weigh these kids. You know, you, you see what we think is hunger in America. Real hunger, it's uh, your, your skin changes, your hair's falling out. Uh, it, it is the most, it, 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 it's painful to see. You know, I, I love my daughter and I couldn't imagine her being hungry and then I see all these hungry kids. I, it's, 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 it's hard. We, uh, Micah and Sheila and I, we took my father out to Cracker Barrel today. We're, we're sitting there in the corner and a precious man walks up and he says, Brother Wynn, I've been following you and Mike on Facebook and seeing how you care for those babies. He said, me and my wife, we want to plant $20 into it. And that just comes from folks that care. So we're asking you, would you help us reach out with this? There's not a certain number we want to raise on this. The more we raise, the more babies we can feed. Yes. But we're going to be given. My family's going to be given. Our church, Miracle Deliverance Tabernacle, is going to be given. Our members are going to be given. And if you'd like to be part of this, he that giveth to the poor lendeth to the Lord, and he will repay. And the, these little orphans, these little babies, you'll never go wrong by helping people. You'll never go wrong. No. Uh, I, I, you know, we're just humans built after Christ himself. You know, when God made Adam, he made him after his image. And when, when you have a baby, there's just something you feel. And I, I, I know God feels for babies. Mm -hmm. I know the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. I know he made eagles. I know he made all these wonderful things. But I know he has a special place in his heart for these babies. And the, the babies in Haiti are just as important as the babies in China, just as important as the babies in your house. So 25 bucks a month to feed a kid and to pull them out of starvation, that's, that's cheap to make a difference in a life. Well, we're right now, we've got enough money. Before the week's over, I hope to get a check to the orphanage directors to tell them that we got enough for to help 50, 50 children. 50 children. That'll be the, so this this time when this, come, this goes out, I, I'd like to have enough to help 100. Amen. So we love you. We love you a lot. We love living for Jesus. We love the people on the little island of Haiti. We love America. God bless America. God bless you. God bless you. Thank you. You ask me how it is, I'm still standing. You wondered how I made it through this storm. I can't boast of any special powers. No, there's no secret. I just held on. Things they're finally happening.
happening. I've got blessings I can call my own. But many times I wondered if I would make it while I was wondering. Lord, I just can't pour it up. Hey, dear friends, this is Pastor Anthony Wynn here at Miracle Deliverance Tabernacle. After 40 years of ministry, my passion remains the same. He that winneth souls is wise. Only eternity will reveal all the many souls that Sheila and I have been so blessed and honored to see come to Jesus to find new hope, new beginnings. Don't know where you are. Don't know all your hurt, your scars, and your pain. Just in a moment of time, everything can be changed. Everything I stand for and I believe in and I lean on is found in this precious word of God. The Bible said if we confess our sins, he's just and he's faithful to forgive us our sins. He will wash us from our sins. The Bible said while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Not while I was in church, not after my addiction, not after my drinking, not after my problem, not after my sin. While I was a sinner, Christ died for me. Friend, he loves you where you are. The enemy's telling you, change, do better, and then come to the Lord. No, you come to the Lord where you are. If we were able to change, we would need a hill called Calvary. We would need an old bloody cross. We would need nails in his hand and a crown of thorns on his head. We wouldn't need that spear drove into his side and blood and water come out. While we were sinners, Christ died for us. Will you pray with me, whatever you're facing, whatever you're going through, this program, this day, this moment can be a whole new beginning in your life. Simple prayer. Jesus, I am a sinner. And I can't do this by myself. I need help. Will you forgive me of my sins? Will you pray this with me, friend? Jesus, forgive me of my sins. Pray out of your heart. Pray out loud. Jesus, forgive me of my sins. Wash away my sins. I'm asking you to be the Lord of my life. I'm asking you to come into my heart. Come into my life. Be my Savior, Jesus. Be my King. Be the lover of my soul. If you'll forgive me and save me, and if you'll come into my heart, I'll live for you. I'll do my very best to read and study and obey this Bible. I'll do my very best to find me a church and and be faithful to the house of God. Until my dying days, I'll serve you and I'll live for you. So Jesus, forgive me of my sins. Come into my heart. Be the Lord of my life. Wash everything away. Give me a fresh start, a new beginning. I'll follow on. I'll, I'll, I'll search you and I'll seek after you. Friend, if you've prayed this prayer and you've asked Jesus into your heart, if you need a Bible, contact us. If you want material, CDs, DVDs, we will send it to you free. We want to help you make heaven your home. We want to help you win your family. We want to hear from you. If you've prayed this prayer with me, contact us. Let us know that you are our family. You have a fresh start and new beginning. This is Brother Wynn. Thank you. and God bless you. While you're here now, just link to us, like us, subscribe, and let us know more content you'd like to hear about the family, about we're going to be doing different podcasts, different things, and we want to be part of your life. We want to find what you're hurting over, what would help you, encourage you. So while you're here now, go ahead and just click it, subscribe. We love you. Please pray for us. This is Brother Wynn telling you Jesus really cares about you. Thank you. God bless you.